Today we will be learning about how to create Bohr models. Remember that Bohr model was developed by Nelson Bohr in 1913 to show the negatively charged electrons orbiting the nucleus that contains the positively charged proton, sort of like a solar system. The Bohr model looks like a bullseye with each ring representing a different level of energy. Each energy level has a certain number of electrons it can hold. You will need to memorize how many can fit into each level. Making it even more complicated, there are two sets of rules, one for elements 20 and below and one for elements above 20. Today, we will focus on simple elements 20 and below. We call this the 288 rule. The first energy level can hold up to two electrons before it is full and you must move on to the next level or ring. The second energy level can hold up to eight electrons and the third energy level can also hold up to eight electrons. If more electrons are needed, the fourth energy level can hold up to 18 electrons. The term used to describe the electrons in the outermost energy level are called valence electrons. Valence electrons dictate a lot of the properties the elements will have. Your teacher will show you a trick how to check your valence electrons using the periodic table in our next lesson. Now let's practice drawing a Bohr model. On your note sheet, the directions say to draw five protons in the nucleus and label with their charge. You will draw five small circles in the center and label them with a positive charge. Next, it tells you to draw six neutrons in the nucleus. Draw six more circles, leaving these circles empty as neutrons are neutral and have no charge. Now it is time to draw in our rings or levels to be able to add our electrons. Draw your first ring around the nucleus. Our instructions tell us to draw two electrons in this first energy level and label them with a negative charge. Next, draw a second energy level or ring and draw three electrons in this level with their negative charges. We can look at this element's number of protons to determine which element it is. It has five protons. Looking at the periodic table, I am able to see this element is boron. An example begins by asking us to draw three protons with positive charges in the center of our model. Next, draw four neutrons with no charges in the nucleus. Draw your first energy level and draw two electrons with negative charges to make this energy level full. Draw your second energy level and draw only one negative electron. This element has three protons, which means it is lithium or Li. For our next example and for most of your examples you complete in class, you will be given the element name and asked to use the periodic table to collect the needed information and draw your Bohr model. We will start with chlorine or Cl. We need to begin by looking at chlorine subatomic particles. On the periodic table, we can see that chlorine has an atomic number of 17. The atomic number tells us the number of protons and electrons. So we have 17 protons and 17 electrons. Finding neutrons is slightly more difficult. Here, we take the atomic mass, the number at the bottom, minus the number of protons, the number at the top. Chlorine has an atomic mass of 35.4 that we will round to 35 because nobody likes decimals. That means we have 35 minus 17, which equals 18 neutrons. Now let's draw our protons and neutrons into the nucleus. Instead of circles, we will draw our protons and neutrons like this. Remember our 288 rule. We have 17 electrons to draw. We can put two in our first energy level, leaving us with 15 more to go. But we can only put eight in our second energy level. After we draw these eight electrons, we are left with seven more to go. Our third energy level can hold up to eight electrons, but we only have seven to draw for chlorine. These seven electrons in our outside energy level are our valence electrons. Let's look at your last example, silicon. Silicon has an atomic number 14. This means that it has 14 protons and 14 electrons. 
silicon has an atomic mass of 28.08, which we will round to 28. This means we have 28, the mass, minus 14, the protons, which equals 14 neutrons. Now to the electrons. We will be drawing 14 electrons. The first energy level can hold two electrons before it's full, leaving us with 12 electrons. The second energy level can hold eight electrons, leaving us with four electrons remaining. The last four electrons will go in the third energy level, and these will be our valence electrons. Remember to follow the 288 rule whenever drawing simple elements 1 to 20. If drawing a larger element over 20, the rule changes to 2, 8, 18, 32. As you can see in this example of zinc that has an atomic number of 30.